Greetings, everybody. I think we're going to start this uh, panel now. If everyone can take their seats, uh, we would appreciate it. Have a very exciting panel um, on a very important topic to Greece, NPLs. And we're going to be talking about the big opportunity there for restructuring growth and investment. Uh, before we get into the substance of the matter, I would like to introduce and ask each of our uh, panelists to briefly introduce themselves. Why don't we start here, the Theodoros Athanasopoulos, who's Executive General Manager of Non-Performing Loans and Wholesale bank Banking at Alpha Bank. Next to him is Robert Liao, who's the Head of Structured Finance for EMEA at City. Martin Zerzda. Martin, did I get your name right? Uh, not quite. Close? Zerzda. Uh, he's the CEO of the Hellenic Stability Fund. We're very honored to have you here today. Uh, George Georgiakopoulos, who is the uh, Executive General Manager of the Legacy Unit at Paris Bank. Uh, we also have with us today Pablo uh, Fernandez Galliano from Credit Suisse. He's a director for the Financial Structured Group for EMEA. And uh, finally, we have uh, George Lenatsas, who's a Managing Director of Exia Ventures Group. The panelists have uh, different perspectives and different viewpoints that I think will give you all a uh, broad sense of NPLs in Greece and, and how things might play out. Let me frame the uh, discussion uh, first. So by mid-2018, uh, the four systemic banks in Greece had about 180 billion loans on a solo basis, of which 86 billion or nearly half were non-performing loans. This figure has certainly decreased from approximately 104 billion in 2016, but the NPL ratio remains high. So what I'd like to do is ask each of the panelists to give their thoughts as to why still this high ratio of NPLs and how is it affecting the bank's operations and the broader economy. Theodorus, why don't we start with you and get your viewpoint? Well, the, first of all, we have to size the uh, magnitude of NPLs. These 100 billion are 100 billion NPLs in an economy of 180 billion of GDP. So, in essence, uh, I don't think that somebody uh, in an economy where the secondary loan market was absent a year ago could expect a more drastic reduction in the first years. So one thing is that uh, the NPL problem is massive, it's across sectors, it's not just the real estate, it's across sectors. So working NPLs down is quite hard. The second thing has already been discussed in previous panels, and we have to address that uh, the uh, total quantum of loans, the credit expansion in Greece, is not that big. So from the one hand you have the numerator decreasing uh, in good shape in 2018, but not as fast as it could be, given the massiveness and the lack of secondary market. And on the other hand, you have the total loan book actually deleveraging uh, due to the economy, which is now starting to shrink. As such, I think it's quite hard to see and to have witnessed in the previous year an accelerated reduction. In terms of operations, the bank has split the operations between NPs and performing businesses. But I will let the other speakers to continue. Thank you. George Georgiakopoulos, you want to jump in from uh, another uh, bank perspective? Thank you. Thank you, Constantine. I think, uh, look, we were in the same uh, room here a year ago. And I uh, was trying myself earlier on actually to make a quick comparison, at least in my mind. You know, how does the one compare to the other in terms of the NPs and where the market is one year on? In short, I think that uh, we are uh, day to night, and actually now is a day. Tremendous progress has been achieved by the Greek banking sector in the management of NPEs in the last uh, one uh, year. The market overall has done a net reduction in the range of about 15 billion, out of which 5 billion were done by us at uh, Pireus Bank. It has strengthened its balance sheet. We only at Pireus and the others have done similar uh, very wise and prudent moves. We have taken in the last seven quarters four and a half billion of provisions to strengthen the balance sheet and be able to do safely the, the, the risking. Most banks 
will be out of the restructuring plans by the year end, and proudly Piraeus will be one of them. Restructuring plans are the plans that the bank signed back in 2012 and 14 when they received state aid. So gladly will be one of them that are out of the restructuring plan very soon. And most importantly, very extensive restructuring of the Greek businesses and households debt has taken place. At Bireus Bank only, we have done the last one year, 8 billion of long-term primarily restructuring, meaning that we would expect to solve the NP problem meaningfully, not simply to take it off our balance sheet, which is a good start possibly, but to solve it meaningfully and to the end. So the performance year on year is day and night, significantly more important. Further, we do have now in, uh, in, uh, in our arsenal of weapons to deal with NPL's tools. We did not have one year ago, or at least we did not have them to the same extent. And solar, an infrastructure we banks have built to deal with NPEs and restructure NPEs in the SME sector, is, uh, is now up and running, and we expect to see results now first, second quarter next year. We have another market infrastructure that keeps functioning and actually has been functioning the last one year very effectively, which is the NPL Forum. This is the forum where the four systemic banks we get together and we deal with large exposures. Exposures typically 100 million uh, euro kind of size. We've been dealing with 8.5 billion and 6.5 billion out of the 8.5 billion. We have dealt with them successfully, uh, most of it the last one year. Sales have taken place eventually in the Greek market. Two very substantial transactions have been uh, finalized. One is the Amoeba of Piraeus Bank. The other one is the Jupiter of uh, Alpha Bank. Uh, securitizations have started getting meaningful traction. Eurobank has started the securitization exercise. The first leg is done. Now they need to, to place it in the market, but they have at least uh, started. And importantly, the legal enforcement is now working. One year ago, the legal enforcement, which is the heart of a free market economy, was not actually functioning. It is now, and it is yielding significant results. Now, I have no doubt that we can keep up that excellent pace of NP reduction with our own means, and we all have meaningful plans to do so. Additional help, and there are uh, systemic type solutions that are being advocated and discussed these days, both by HFSF, an APS type plan, and the Bank of Greece, uh, uh, an asset management company type, uh, type structure and plan. They would both be very helpful, hopefully, and possibly even complementary, and assistance in doing even, even better, even faster. So, Constantine, my position year on year, day and night, both in performance, infrastructure, market tools, and willingness and confidence that we can deal with our issues. Yeah, uh, I, I, I can only say that uh, I've seen both you and Theodorus, the way you approach these uh, NPL portfolios, and certainly from uh, that vantage point, it's quite impressive, and I think the banks are in good stead under your leadership. Uh, I'd like to ask Martin for his views, taking a, a bit of a, a, a different um, uh, uh, sitting point uh, as to how he's viewing the NPL market and if it's consistent with um, the viewpoint of the two banks we just heard from. Well, I uh, represent a shareholder, so I don't see uh, the development of the MPEs, MPLs, not that positively, not that rapidly. What I can say is, compared to last year, now everyone understood that this is the big elephant, and that problem needs to be solved. That, for me, is one of the biggest steps forward uh, into solving the issue. But if you look into details, yes, George was mentioning the tools. The tools are available now. But what about the implementation? The implementation is still slow. If you're looking at the restructurings of the loans, the curing rates are not really rising. They're more or less flat. The redefault rates, uh, they're flat, sometimes rising as well. Um, the MPL sales are relatively slow, although they're now the portfolios uh, brought to the market. That is a very positive thing, but the dimension still is slow or is, is small. 
And uh, if we look at the, the figures uh, about what George was mentioning, uh, that uh, the SSM uh, was uh, stipulating, so end of uh, 2019, uh, the MPEs should be down with 65 billion. Well, what does that mean? It still means more than 30%, still close to 40%. So that is still a big number, and uh, we believe that more efforts need to be done to tackle that issue. Yes, I definitely concede progress, but now we need to raise the speed in that respect. Thank you, Martin. Why don't we uh, switch gears now and get some of the uh, investment bank perspective on this very topic. Robert, do you want to jump in on this? Yeah, look, I think everybody's made really good points here. And, you know, I think, you know, belief and confidence in the NPL sector, the NPE sector in Greece is, is definitely improving. I think, you know, a year and a half ago, if you talk to investors, you know, around interest in Greece, whether it was performing or non-performing, it was actually pro quite limited. Whereas all of a sudden this year, I think there's a general belief that things have kind of hit the bottom. The tools are now in place to, to make the investment and, and move into Greece. And so we're seeing a lot of interest. Um, in, in, in NPLs and performing loans at this point in time. And so hopefully that confidence will continue to carry on as history kind of proves out that some of the new uh, tools put in place are actually working and will actually speed up the process. But I think that is one of the keys right now is, you know, is everything we're seeing, all the improvements we're seeing really going to, you know, evolve in a way that allows things to happen faster, recoveries to happen faster, you know, improve upon uh, the prices that uh, can be achieved in the market. Um, but I think one thing that, you know, away from some of the, the broader spectrum tools that we have, I think something that, you know, both the, the, the banks who have sold things in the market can appreciate is the importance of data quality uh, when they go to selling portfolios. And a lot of work goes into that and a lot of time goes into that. But I think, again, you know, if that can be more standardized by bank, I'm not sure there's necessarily a systemic solution. but if we can get data out to investors in a way that is, is almost repetitive and they can see and know what they get each time a portfolio comes to market, again, that will help speed up the process uh, in, in the near term. Thank you, Robert. Pablo, how about uh, from Credit Suisse perspective on this same sure. topic? Um, a few messages on my side, and I, I believe, you know, not, not very dissimilar to what is being said uh, so far. The first one is, uh, the legal and regulatory framework is there, and the challenge is on the implementation. Uh, of course, you know, there can be new tools. We're expecting them uh, to add on to the existing ones, but the ones that are already there are a good sign uh, uh, for the sector. So um, um, uh, the second one I wanted to mention is that investor interest is there. And investor interest, meaning, you know, um, 10, 20 bidders, you know, on certain uh, portfolio sales, that's very similar to what we are seeing in other countries. So this is very positive. And why there is this investor uh, interest? One is because of the size of the opportunity. We've discussed that uh, in the past. And, uh, and we can see as well that uh, the point in the cycle of Greece is very interesting to investors, right? And uh, we've compared that to other Southern European countries, uh, Portugal, Spain, uh, probably ahead of that, uh, and, uh, you know, getting on the last uh, um, phases of the deleveraging. Italy is a little bit on the middle. But for Greece, the opportunity is now. And we've seen in other countries that uh, whenever the confidence is there, and the confidence meaning you know, investors focusing on that and transactions getting done, that, that's what we are seeing. And from the uh, start of the you know, first sales of uh, NPLs, we were seeing you know, three, four, seven cents uh, uh, pricings went up to seven on secure transactions. Uh, 30 going up to 33, 35. So these are all positive signs. So I'm quite optimistic because all these preconditions are there. And, uh, and I think what we need as well in terms of NPLs is somehow a professional uh, 
servicing of those assets. That um, what we have also found out, you know, in other countries is that you, to well manage those portfolios, uh, one, you need expertise, of course, you need the uh, systems, you need the data quality that uh, Bob was referring to, um, but also it's very important the, um, to detach those portfolios and those loans uh, from the people that granted those, right? Um, we need to look at them from a very objective uh, perspective, and the only way to do that is really, you know, putting them in separate vehicles, uh, and this is what is happening already in some of the banks, and treat them, you know, uh, in a professional fashion. So I think that uh, um, everything is looking on the right side, and I think that uh, uh, continue the track and the implementation is going to be uh, the key going forward. Thank you. Uh, George, why don't you see if you can't um, bring all of those viewpoints together for a summation of where the MPL market is. I would say that thus far, uh, uh, with the exception of Martin, there seems to be a rosier gloss on what is happening in the MPL market going forward and wondering uh, how you and Axia looks at it. Well, uh, I'm glad I'm giving the chance, Constantine, to wrap this thing up. I think we've listened to different points of view here. I'm more in line with uh, my colleague here and uh, George's points of view. Um, I just want to go back a little bit to 2015 when um, the banks last raised capital. Back then, there was a three-year plan to reduce the NPEs, agreed with the regulator. And I remember back then, everybody was questioning whether or not these banks would be able of meeting these targets. Guess what? Each one of them did meet the targets and surpassed the targets for uh, 16, 17, and 18. So effectively, the banks addressed the question mark of 15. Can you do that? Yes, they, they can. Now there are new three-year plans uh, for the next three years, up to 2021. Uh, as we know, and from things that have leaked in the press, these uh, new targets range from um, anywhere from 15 to 25 percent of their loans being NPEs, from where they are currently stand, which is around 40 to 50 percent. So these new um, three-year plans, uh, the question again is, uh, will the banks be able to actually do it and do it in a way that it doesn't dilute their shareholders? And uh, then there is the new point of view that has emerged over the last few months that, you know, it's too little, too late, meaning these banks are still sitting on too many NPEs versus any other European banking system. Well, guess what? That's not a new thing. We all knew that for years now. It, anybody who invested in Greek banks knew it, and everybody, there has been nothing that is a new surprise, a negative surprise. Contrary, I think what the banks have achieved is better than anybody expected. Now, if we want to open the conversation whether or not this amount of NPEs is, um, is something that we should be proud of or is something that should compare favorably the Greek banks versus their European banks, the answer is absolutely no. But the problem there doesn't lie into the banks. It lies how to take these assets off balance sheet because getting rid of these assets at any fire sale price is not to the benefit of anyone. But getting these off balance sheet, so others can work around these NPEs in the most efficient manner and with the different uh, tools that exist without the pressure of the targets is the right answer to that. And I think we've seen uh, the APS uh, scheme um, coming into the market. We've seen the Bank of Greece coming out with a new structure, which I I've heard a lot of criticism about, but I don't agree with the criticism, by the way. And I think there can be tweaks around that that will make this thing work. Well, and we're going to talk about that in a... Yeah, uh, uh, but it's a new tool, and we saw one of the banks coming up with a other tool of their own addressing the problem, and it will accelerate. They will uh, actually be with uh, single-digit NPEs in three years as opposed to 20% or so that the previous target was. So there are solutions to the problem. I'm very surprised the market doesn't see it. I'm very surprised people are reacting to old news. Um, but I am very much in favor of the statement of Mr. Gergakopoulos from Piraeus Bank. It's day and night where we were and where we are, and it's definitely day now.
and it's a sunny day. Thanks, George. Uh, it was mentioned a couple times about a, a potential systemic uh, uh, solution. And I think, as you, we all know, last month the Bank of uh, Greece, Greece authored a uh, special feature titled A Systemic Proposal for the Management of Non-Performing Exposures. The proposal calls for the implementation of a centralized management scheme managed by private investors and foresees the transfer to a special purpose vehicle of a significant part of the bank's non-performing loans at net book value, along with a portion of the deferred tax credits booked on the lender's balance sheets. The portfolios would then be managed by uh, a, a, a servicer selected by the investment funds, I guess something that Pablo might be uh, interested in, in, in um, talking about. But more generally, how, how do you view a proposal like this in terms of it, the viability of it being implemented in Greece, the participation of the government, the politics that might be involved in agreeing to do so? And have you seen examples of this in other countries um, where it has been successful or not successful? Uh, George, why don't we stick with you, George Lanzas, uh for your reaction about this? You're referring to the Bank of Greece um, structure? Um, uh, the viability of it being implemented and the, and the likelihood of participation by the banks? Um, we, um, as an investment bank, we are discussing all these different schemes with our clients, uh, the banks. Um, obviously, addressing the DTC issue and utilizing the DTCs w without diluting or triggering dilution for shareholders is a key issue going forward. And what Bank of Greece is trying to address is that problem on its own. Um, look, assuming that this is voluntary means nobody is forced to take it and nobody is forced to adopt it. And um, um, assuming that there is a modularity in the quantum meaning the banks can individually um, decide which uh, denounced loans they put forward in this scheme. And assuming that there is an ongoing uh, intensifying discussion among all stakeholders of all the necessary tweaks that are needed for this plan, I think that there is one or two banks that are seriously considering taking advantage of this new uh, tool, which is one of the many, by the way. Thank you. Uh, George, I think I think the, the tool would have to clear some serious legal and uh, regulatory hurdles, but in terms of a, a, a systemic pr proposal like this um, being accepted and implemented, Martin, what's the view from the Hellenic Stability Fund? Well, first of all, we we are a shareholder, and as a shareholder, we wanted to move faster, and uh, we were considering various options what could be done, and. Um, uh, the structure we are uh, presenting or we were presenting to the Ministry of Finance uh, was an asset protection scheme and uh, that is a deconsolidated uh, option because first we also uh, were considering an uh, on balance sheet um, uh, option and um, uh, that is a securitization that means a junior, mason and senior and um, uh, the the reference uh, we took was the Italian model, the so-called GAX. And um, uh, why did we do that? Because the GAX was approved by DigiComp, was approved by SSM. And uh, so the likelihood that uh, those institutions uh, will, uh, will approve it are relatively high. But of course, there are major differences to Italy. Greece doesn't have investment grade. Um, and uh, uh, the reference rate uh, uh, is difficult. Well, now, what makes the asset protection scheme so attractive is because the MinFIN and we are considering to guarantee the senior tranche. And uh, we're talking an amount of 15, maybe up to 20 billion. And uh, the senior tranche should be roughly 70% of this amount. And uh, the, the government guarantee should be roughly up to five billion. But I don't want to elaborate too much on this because uh, 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 the, the Ministry of Finance uh, uh, should do that. We are a shareholder and this is uh, just a proposal. But it's also voluntary, uh, so that means it gives the banks uh, the chance to, um, uh, to go for this. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's targeting uh, primarily uh, SMEs and uh, small business loans. And um, uh, we believe this could kickstart uh, the market. 
um, Greece is also uh, the only country where you do not have a sovereign supported scheme, unlike Portugal, Spain, Italy. You have it in all those countries, even Cyprus now has it. And um, we are uh, optimistic and um, uh, we are very happy that now the Ministry of Finance uh, uh, takes ownership of, uh, of this project. Thank you, Martin. So we've described, so there are two, just to frame the discussion, there are a couple of competing, I don't know if competing is the right word, but a couple of proposals out there about a systemic solution for, for the MPLs, very early stages, I think, largely, uh, although it sounds like there's some advanced discussions going on. Um, and the question I'll have for both uh, George Georgiakopoulos and Theodorus is, you know, how do the banks view these proposals and what's either the likelihood of participation or how it affects what you're doing and how you see the market for NPLs as, as you're performing it. So, George, you want to? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Constantina. I think, look, as I said, I mean, I know in depth uh, where we stand at Brioche Bank, but I, I think the other banks have similar sort of uh, approach. First of all, the Greek, the Greek banks, and I said I know in depth what Piraeus has done, we have done. First of all, we have taken provisions and we have prepared the balance sheet to be able to deal with this major demand and exercise of de-risking it. That's a very good start. Secondly, last year we all took significant write-offs. Piraeus Bank only we took 2.5 billion write-offs and 1.5 out of the 2.5 billion write-offs were there exactly to support the deep restructurings and cure accounts. So the, the, the banking sector has taken significant uh, uh, write-offs. We have done the expensive restructurings. Most of us, we have done the bulk of the restructuring that will be required to solve uh, uh, the problem. And uh, I believe that the Greek banking sector can fund its way out of the NPEs at the given rate that we have uh, presented to the regulator, and was presented here, about 50 billion in the next three and a half years. You know, this is the intent and the objective. From PPI, from the pre-provision income, I think that's the status of the banking sector. Now, over and above that, and this is the basis on which we have done our own plans, each one of us, i.e. we can fund it from our own PPI. We have done a lot of the hard graft with provisioning, and, uh, and we can deal with our issues at the, time at, at the time frame that we described, three and a half years, to reduce by 50 billion. Now, over and above our own plans now, systemic solutions such as APS or the asset management company uh, described at a high level at least by the, the Bank of Greece papers, of course are very positive developments and of course we welcome them, we would love to have them. The solutions on each market cannot and they, and they need not be the same. So the fact that uh, Spain had a, a bad bank on an asset management company this was different days to solve a very different problem back then. The problem back then was to save the nine failing cajas, saving banks. So they had to create a bad bank to deal with real estate development debt from those specific. This is not the problem we have to deal with in Greece in 2018. So we cannot need an identical solution. The fact, therefore, is that we have our own plans and we have our own uh, uh, trajectory here Systemic solutions suitable to the circumstances are more than welcome. And I think they can fit our strategies like a glove and very quickly once they're implemented, of course. Thank you, George. Theodorus, can you, can you uh, add to George's view? Or? Yes, I think more or less if we summarize what has been told, I think we'll see the solution. Uh, we understand that this is a very complex issue and uh, I fully abide with what George said that uh, we had very optimistic targets uh, three years ago. We reached the targets uh, with a buffer, all banks, maybe with different mix. And now we have even more uh, optimistic targets going forward. But at the end of 2021, if we hover around 15 to 20%, we'll see that the euro area now is below 5%. So this is one thing. So the organic, in a sense, reduction needs to be uh, addressed. The second thing that we need to see out of this analysis is that uh, the system is gradually shifting to market-based solutions. Uh, two years ago, we did not have a framework for NPL sales or nor uh, services. We had established services last year. We managed to do around 10 billion of sales. And the truth of the matter is that 
entering into asset classes and selling asset classes which are more complex, like the granular uh, secured SMEs or the portfolio that uh, Pireo sold, uh, this is a market which is currently picking. So I think the truth is that the banks will need to fo will gradually focus to more uh, market-based solutions. If we do that, and because we need to preserve shareholder value, we need A, to select the portfolios that we will be offloading, and B, try to uh, avoid uh, or decrease the bid ask spread. So the two schemes that are currently under discussion and that will involve the asset protection scheme or the Bank of Greece scheme, which is hovering around how we treat the disease, are tools that, if they are out there and voluntary, they will actually add on to the capacity of the banks to front load their uh, NP reduction. In that sense, it does not mean that the banks will only do an asset protection scheme or that the banks will only go to a potential Bank of Greece solution. It will mean that the banks will contemplate these options within to their uh, NP reduction plans. So you will be having your own organic reduction your own mix of sales, a potential securitization, and a participation in a scheme. To that sense, I think it's quite important that the system, as previously discussed, has started to discuss systemic solutions, but on, not in the sense of a bad bank, in the sense of addressing either the bid ask spread that the CAC could uh, resolve, or the DTC issue, which might trigger if you front load a resolution, it might trigger a dilution to the shareholders. The, what the banks need to see is to find the optimal mix of the final solutions in place and the portfolios that are going to put in in order to uh, you know, support the growth story to the good bank in a few years. Thank you. Um, Robert and Pablo, I'd be interested to get your thoughts um, around whether a, a broad-based uh, systemic an all-encompassing solution is uh, something you'd like to see implemented and, and whether you're aware of any proposals that could uh, encompass you yeah. know, each of the banks in inherently unique situation potentially in a way that helps them offload some of these NPLs and, and, and in, into a, a structure as, as we've discussed or others that you may have seen. So Robert, do you want to touch on that first? Yeah, look, I think all these things that are tools that help kind of reduce that bid-ask spread, you know, are really important to the system. I don't, I don't think there is any one solution. I think the downside to some of the systemic solutions is they, they require some approvals. And I think the risk is always that, you know, in, investors get excited about systemic solutions, but if they're not delivered on time for political reasons or regulatory reasons, you kind of get starts, in, you know, fits of starts and stops. And, and that, that's not necessarily good for the market. So. I agree with the you know the private solutions which keep the markets moving, keep going the right way, drive the other um, you know other systemic solutions. If they get there, that's great. There's more tools that will help further reduce the bid ask spread. That'll allow banks to have choices about how they want to do things, how investors want to you know uh, proceed in, in this market based on those tools. But I think what's important about all these things it shows real dedication and focus to fixing the problem and it helps put a line under the values of these NPLs, which you couldn't do before. And that's what's really important, and that will hopefully start building the confidence and getting the momentum going the right way. Uh, and so those systemic solutions, d you know, don't underestimate the positive feedback loop you can create with those. Pablo? Would yeah, no, I completely agree with uh, what's been said. I think is uh, those systemic solutions are extremely helpful. It might take time to be used, but they provide a backstop that uh, investors like to see. And uh, uh, Robert mentioned momentum. I think that is key. What we have seen in other countries is once transactions start to happen and uh, um, the momentum and investor confidence uh, um, comes back, uh, we can see financing coming uh, a lot tighter than it uh, was, um, prices of the assets going up, and the investors pricing you know, even upside the scenarios. 
And uh, I think that what is very important is that uh, you know all these tools are there and there, and then the banks they tailor each solution to each portfolio, and uh, every single portfolio of every single bank is different. Not to say uh, comparing with other countries, right? I think that the problem of Greece. Uh, in terms of MPLs, it's a problem of SMEs. Uh, as was described before, it's completely different to what was in Ireland or Spain that was purely real estate. Um, but I think that uh, having those tools there are going to be extremely helpful. What we have seen, though, is that the, let's say, systemic uh, uh, tools have been used at a point where the countries were going through, uh, let's say, stress scenarios, which I don't think is the case now in Greece. We are in a much more benign uh, environment and really having seen you know, the bottom of, uh, of the crisis. So I think that's why it's important for those uh, solutions to be available for banks, but not uh, compulsory to them. Thank you. And, and as we're talking about these systemic proposals taking off in, in one fashion or another, uh, we have to look back over this past year as we've already referenced some of the uh, one-off deals that have been uh, concluded in the marketplace. We spoke, I think, uh, we touched on uh, Eurobank's uh, deal uh, where it's set to acquire the Gravalia through a, a share swap transaction and shift non-performing debt to a separate vehicle. That deal is expected to boost Eurobank's capital base by over a billion dollars and clear the way for its large pile of non-performing loans to be reduced at a, at a faster rate. Uh, also, uh, and, and George referred to it, Project uh, Amoeba uh, resulted in the sa sale of a $1.45 billion price of non-performing business loans secured by real estate assets to bank capital. And Alpha Bank uh, also sold over $800 million of collateralized non-performing loans to a third-party buyer. So the question is, are these uh, anomalies, or is this the beginning of a cascade in terms of the uh, banks uh, monetizing, selling off, or otherwise reducing their NPL exposure? Um, why don't we start uh, with Mr. Lenatsis? Could you repeat the question, the last part? The last. My question is, are, are those unique deals, or are they the beginning of a... Of a uh, a large spurt of activity of uh, NPL transactions by the banks? No, I think it's only the beginning, and um, there could not be in any other way. Um, as one of my co-panelists said, a few years back there were no uh, servicers in Greece. Now there's almost 20, I think. Um, uh, banks had to deal with other issues. I think there is the know-how, there is the infrastructure, there is the services. There is um, the interest by potential buyers. A few transactions have taken place, I think, have surprised with the outcome, both in terms of the timing, start to finish of the transaction process, but also in terms of the actual pricing offered by the preferred bidder, uh, irrespective if it's the Jupiter transaction or the Amoeba transaction, even smaller transactions, one-off transactions. And I think uh, starting with, um, you know, Piraeus is running a couple of transactions. Um, uh, I, um, Eurobank is coming to the market with the first uh, large securitization. Um, these are transactions that will happen. The pricing will again be positive, and um, there's a lot more to come. Um, and don't forget the seven billion securitization transaction out of Eurobank after the two billion, which is a, a quite unique uh, type of transaction, also which. Uh, will transform the bank. So I'm very excited about the prospects of all these transactions uh, for uh, 19 and 20. I've been informed by our esteemed uh, chairman, Mr. Bernosi, that we need to kind of reach a, a, a final end to the commentary. And so I think the best way to do it, and maybe Pablo will end with Theodorus, is just to uh, give your prognosis for the uh, NPL market in Greece. Where are we, we going to be next year at this time? Where are we going to be? In, three years. Your, your best guess, no one's going to hold you to it, I don't think. So um, hopefully in three years' time, we'll be, you know, with a completely clean bank, not talking about NPLs and talking only about profitability. 
let's hope so. I think that there is the grounds uh, uh, to reach there. And um, um, I've always heard, you know, um, banks like uh, myself talking, you know, is there going to be enough financing, you know, uh, for a certain country? Are we going to break the limits? I think the investors and the uh, balance sheet is going to be, and the lending is going to be there to accomplish all that uh, at the right prices. So I am very confident that this will happen, and uh, in three years' time, we'll be talking about uh, uh, different uh, uh, topics here. George? I think uh, in, a, in a year's time, I think we'll be in an even better place than we are today, or a much better place than we are today. I think we have done the hard work. The banking sector will have uh, momentum, and we are going to see the actions have already taken, all actions have already started, actions taken, restructuring, so actions started in the sales, let's say, getting even more momentum and being in a better place uh, next year. Thank you, Martin. Um, I think 2019 will be crucial. Uh, the momentum is there, but we all, we all need to follow up on the implementation. What I observe is the recognition of all parties involved, uh, not only us as shareholders, also the other shareholders uh, view this. I also sense this uh, from the institutions, so the will is there. But we need to be very strong on the implementation and on the follow-up. And then I also hope that um, uh, a, a secondary market will develop and will function. And uh, we as a shareholder, because uh, we are asked uh, the three years uh, prognosis, uh, we want uh, the MPLs below 10%. Because only if uh, the MPLs are below 10%, uh, you can say that uh, this is a functioning bank, it's a, it's a functioning system. And then the next burning issue will come to the banks, which is not as burning as it is now, those are the functioning business models. So what are the Greek banks going to do once the MPL issues are being solved? Thank you, Martin. Robert? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I hope we're talking less about NPEs and more about growth sooner rather than later. And I think, you know, we're positioned to be doing that. Um, again, the tools are in place. The investors are there. Uh, a little bit of history and a few more sales, I think, will get real momentum and liquidity going into the NPE sector. Uh, and then moving on to grow from there. So let's hope that's what's happening in the next two years. Thank you. Theodorus? Well, I'd say that uh, they're going to be very, these very difficult three years in the sense that uh, we're going to have to deliver optimistic plans with NB ratios uh, below 20%, preserve shareholder value. Uh, which is quite important into this attempt because uh, if you overdo it, you might destroy value. Uh, and be in a position to discuss more about the good bang and less than the bad bang. Uh, what makes me feel optimistic is that three years ago, when we crafted the previous plan, uh, once we finished the submission, uh, we were quite scared on whether we can achieve it, uh, and we had half the toolkits we have now. So I think it is going to be ambitious. It's going to be uh, really detailed. But uh, most probably three years, we will be seeing a sunny day. That's great. Thank you all. I think that, Nicholas, maybe one or two questions for this panel. OK. If you have any questions, please uh, submit them to Mr. Bernozzi's, and he'll disseminate them to the panelists, and they'll get back to you separately. Thank you all for attending. Thank you.